Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to year ninth, which is a secondary treat. The chapter of the pattern of the reactivity. Okay. So I hope that you enjoy this one. Okay. This is Mr. Handy Clement. Okay. For revision, for preview, and for your exercise. Okay. So <clears throat> this top, uh, this shelling is tend to help you. Okay. To, to get familiar with your books and you can always go back to buy more textbook. <clears throat> Usually I would recommend you to get a student to get at least two textbooks. You can share with your friends. You can buy it from the bookstores. You can borrow it from the library. But I think it's better for you to revision at least two textbooks. So for my own Okay, I usually have two to three textbooks for each subject because I think that different authors will help you a lot. Okay, just like this because uh, I tend I also giving tuition uh, with, with with some fees, and this is a very simple form, simple way of the sharing, and I would like to use this simple and straightforward sharing instead of a detailing okay detailed uh, tuition because uh, uh, this is from other perspective, you know, okay? This is uh, give you a overview of the course as compared to other things, which is like, we go into the very detailed format for the exam exercise, exam for exam purpose. This is maybe just an overview, okay? So uh, I'm using this book for this session, okay? So we shall turn to the books, to the picture. This is the... Uh, This is the book uh, I get second hand, okay? And put it in my library, okay? So today we are going to this unit six, uh, the reactivity series, okay? So let's go to the perspectives first. So if you have the same book, you can use the same book. If not, you can use other books. I will just tell you about some important things, okay? So the very first thing uh, we need to learn about is the metals and their reaction with the oxygen. Secondly, reaction with the water and then with some acid. Okay, This acid is called dilute acid, uh, which is not very concentrated. It's not that fast reaction, but somehow the acid we use uh, may be fast, but we need to dilute it so that the reaction will be more, will be safer. Okay. And then we need to learn about the series. Okay, this one, 
from the most reactive to the least reactive. And then using the series, we know that we can do the displacement, displacement reaction. And then we must know that the usage of this displacement reaction, and then that will call of the day, okay? So come, let's do it now. So the first thing is a reaction with the metal oxygen, okay? So we, we just get the metal and then we burn it. No? We burn it so that to allow the oxygen to react faster. But some metal actually is uh, even faster. You don't need to burn. You just cut it out and then it will combine with the oxygen immediately. Okay, That one is for the group one metal later. Okay. So here are some of the description of the reaction that take place uh, when the certain metal are heated with oxygen. Okay. So look at this. Okay. We have this metal and the metal here. Okay, for the copper. Okay. For the copper is somewhere around here. Okay. The copper develops a, a covering of the black powder without giving growing or burst into frame. Okay. Copper is a uh, uh, is okay. It's uh, turning into the black powder that without the growing. Okay, iron grows and produces uh, yellow sparks. The black powder is left behind. So if you burn iron, it will give you a yellow sparks. Sodium, uh, sodium no need to burn, you know. Sodium just need a little heat to make it burst into the yellow frame and quickly leave a white powder. So the iron leave you a black powder where there's a so then they give you a white powder. Gold is not changed after you have been heated and then cooled lovely down. Okay, let me draw the picture for you. So the copper. Copper will be immediately turned to the If you get this one, they will turn into the black powder. Okay. Second, if the iron, iron will grow. Grow means that look red color and then blend into the yellow sparks. Yellow, I mean yellow color. Yellow sparks. Okay. Yellow sparks. Okay. And then left behind the black one, the black color. How the but that's sodium. Sodium. So you only need a little bit here, eh? okay? okay? For the sodium, we do this, this test. Eh? This is a jar of oxygen, okay? And then we burn a little bit of the, a little bit of the, of the sodium. And then we insert this one inside. Okay. So this sodium will burst into burst now into yellow frame in the oxygen jar. And then left behind the white powder. Oh, how to draw white powder? I have the white color, but I'm not sure I can draw white powder or not. Really, you cannot see, yeah. Okay, try to just show you that that's white. Huh? <clears throat> so lastly, we have go. Go, I think we should do in this color. Go. Go.
go, <coughs> go, no width. Okay, go is so stable. That's why <coughs> this go is not react with the oxygen. That's why you, if you go to the the go mine or some river, you can just shift eh, and get the go go grain. You know, the the, the, the grain means that uh, like just like the a piece of the rice or the wheat. Eh? Go grain. Okay, so this is the act with the oxygen. Number one, okay. So the yeah, oxygen. Let's look at this. Not group one matter. Okay, group one matter is this one: lithium, sodium, and potassium. This is the most reactive metals. Okay, the group matter are softer than other matter. They are soft just like the butter. You know, you can just use a okay, a small knife. You can cut it. Okay. They are more reactive than other metals. They must be stored under oil because they are reacting by grossly with the moisture in the air and can explode. And also they react with the oxygen very fast. Okay. When pieces of lithium, sodium, and protein are taken out from their container, they appear dull, not shiny. Why? Initially they are shiny, you know, but just for a second, they will become dull because the piece are cut. The surface is shiny. The shiny surface soon become dull because the metal react with the oxygen in the air. So now they are rusting, just like that. The iron, but very fast. No? Okay, we call it oxidized. The surface become covered with new substances and oxide huh, of that metal. For example, sodium oxide, lithium oxide, potassium oxide. These metals are so reactive and that they react with oxygen even when they are not heated. You just cut, then they will react. So the general words the equation for this reaction of a matter of oxygen is that the matter plus the oxygen will become the matter of sight. Here, for example, the sodium plus oxygen will become a sodium oxide. You have the lithium. Plus the oxygen will become a lithium oxide. Any word, <coughs> any word. If you have the magnesium, magnesium plus oxygen will become magnesium oxide. Just be careful. The magnesium words are is remain the same, but the oxygen we will write it as IDE oxide. Okay. So let's turn. For some, for some, just like copper and gold, we can read only a little bit. Eh? So we should try it. Eh? We use other, other reaction. Maybe we can take a small piece of one of the metal, okay? And then use some paper to clean it the space. So we remove the, the oxide layer and then put it and place it in the tap, a tube of water immediately before it can be, become oxide. Record the observation in the table. Okay, and explain what happened. Okay. So now we have this reaction with the uh, uh, metal and water. Okay, we need to learn about this reaction with the metal and with the water. Okay. Some of this description, okay. <clears throat> uh, the water we need to test with uh, two two times, okay. The first first thing is uh, you test with the cold water first, and then only we try with the hot water. Okay. So to try with the cold water, okay, we should do it on the most reactive group, which is the group one metal. Okay, group one metal also carry another word name. Eh? Okay, group one metal. Another man, we call it alkalis matter. Okay, why? Okay, when the, the matter put in the water, so after we react, they release the hydrogen. What is left is the alkaline solution. Okay, so we call it the alkali matter. 
In stage A, now we know the learn sum. So when you put the, this lithium in the water to produce the hydroxide and oxygen, this one will move. So red is more reactive than this one. They will go here and there and fizzing. And potassium is more reactive. They generate and catch fire. So if you compare to the reactivity series, uh, in the periodic table, the more down the groups is the more reactive. This one is less reactive. Okay, but among these three, is still the most reactive as compared to the group two. They are the most reactive group. Okay, so this is the best. This one comes second, and this is third. Okay. So what they produce? They produce a metal plus water it will produce a metal hydroxide and hydrogen, which is the metal hydroxide is the alkaline. So that's how we call it a metal alkaline. So the general formula will be metal plus water. Just start with a plus oxygen, so it become oxide. Plus water will become hydroxide. It will become a just the same thing. This is a salt. This is a, no, this is hydroxide, metal. Hydroxide plus hydrogen. This is a gas, huh? hydrogen gas. Okay. So the metal, for example, now I want to use sodium plus water will become a sodium hydroxide plus. Hydrogen gas. Okay, and you, you want to change it to other things such as lithium oxygen, lithium hydroxide. Okay, and this hydroxide is a alkali. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so react with the water. Some of metal react less vigorously with water, for example, magnesium and calcium. So you can do this experiment. Place a piece of the calcium has been placed in the bottom of the beaker and covered with water. The fatafina has been placed upside down. Okay, and then the gas given off, you can collect here by the... But this, be careful, eh? this is the metal that is uh, not the group one, okay? Group one will burst, eh? okay? And then group one will not stay here at the bottom. Group one will be floating up there. Okay, but the group two will be down there. Okay, so this is the water. So this is still cold water, you know. But some, uh, can you see, they are not so inert. You cannot, you cannot, uh, how to say, react with the cold water. So you need to have a hot one, hot water, okay. So the hot one, we need to use this apparatus. Some metal do not react. Okay, with the water, uh, so we need to react with the steam. Then we need to do it with the steam. Okay, so how to do it with the steam? Okay, so even magnesium will react more rapidly with steam than with water. Okay, even the group two, eh? group two. Okay, in the in this direction, the right magnesium is heated. Okay, from time to time, the ceramic wool is also heated. Ceramic ooze, the ceramic is soaked with the water. Okay, so which produce steam in this reaction? The magnesium reacts with water in the form of gas. Magnesium oxide and hydrogen are, per, are formed. The hydrogen is gas, is that given off can be burned. Okay, so this one the word equation for the reaction is that magnesium plus the steam will become the magnesium oxide plus hydrogen, <coughs> magnesium oxide plus hydrogen. So to this book, sir, we need to know that the magnesium, this, this is calcium, this is magnesium. Okay, the both magnesium and magnesium, uh, calcium and magnesium can be used this cold water. Okay, but magnesium itself, you can use steam, okay? So that to produce the hydrogen gas, okay? Okay. 
one thing to be careful is that uh, the metal this is uh, so inert uh, so this one will be not become a hydroxide okay because there's no water there just a steam so the difference between this and that is that this one is a hydroxide on the, on the other side this but uh, this is hydroxide and this is the magnesium oxide so same thing you can apply to the calcium using this method okay So now we go to the acid now. If the, the thing is so inert again, so we need to use it to, to use the dilute acid. Okay. You will probably remember seeing this reaction of the magnesium with hydrochloric acid to produce a salt, huh? which is magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. Magnesium chloride is a symbol of salt. Huh? This is a salt. Okay, Do you remember this word salt? And the metal react with the acid to produce a salt and hydrogen. Okay, any metal will do, but this will not be done with the group one metal because group metal is so reactive. Even you put in the cold water, they are already explode. So if you put with uh, acid, definitely they will cause a great danger. Okay, so this is apparatus. Oh, so be careful. Okay, let me explain to you. So, firstly, you must know that uh, for the group one metals such as sodium and potassium, they, they are react so violently with the acid. So, we can we are not using so group one. Group one, no. No to acid. Uh, okay, in your lab, okay? Other metal react less vigorously. Okay, and then can be studied using a test tube as shown. Okay, so how? Yeah, this is the way. This is a test tube. And then this is the holder, the rubber holder. Test tube holder. And then you can put some matter here, which is the grain. For example, aluminium, which is less reactive. And then you pour the hydrochloric acid there. Okay. So the bubble will give off. A piece of metal is placed in a test tube of flax, then the acid is poured and the bubble of hydrogen. So this one is coming out, it's a hydrogen. Ah, observe. Okay. The reactivity of metal can be compared by comparing the amount of hydrogen gas produced in the reaction between the acid and different metal. The word equation is that metal plus hydrochloric acid become a metal chloride plus hydrogen gas, okay? So if I put here aluminium, it will be aluminium. Plus hydrochloric acid and thus aluminium chloride plus halogen gas will be a product. Another apparatus, just now, if you want to compare the relativities, you can use this way. Okay. So this is a flash conical. 
class. And then you have the funnel. And then you have something to correct the guess. Go down to the water. And then make a turn. Into a dust tube. And this is a beacon of water. Okay. So firstly, you put all the matter, the matter you want to test here. Okay. But the gram should be the same. Nah? For example, you want to put the copper first. Because you want to make it a fair test. Okay. So this design is to test to collect any hydrogen gas here. Okay. With a given time. So you need to put the test, the, the method inside, and then you pour the acid through here. This is called the kissel. So funnel. Okay. So the acid will be there. Okay. And then the reaction will start. The hydrogen will escape here. And go through the pass, and you know, this is a you block with a bonk, okay, and then the gas will push the air go down, so you can you can correct the gas here. So this is a delivery tube. Okay, a minute should be allowed, lah. I think, uh, a one minute. The time should be the same, okay, for the air to escape from the end of the delivery tube, and then the test tube full of water can be put over. To collect the hydrogen, so you let the some oh sorry, let the some gas flow out first, then a uh, uh, uh test tube full of water, then you put in, then you start at counting the time. Okay, now. So this one must be covered by the bomb. Okay, so you, you can change your method. Okay. So, so here are some other description. Okay, come. If I put in the lead here, lead does not react with acid. <coughs> okay, does not react with dilute HCl, hydrochloric acid, slowly with concentrated. But when you deal with concentrated one, eh? be careful, eh? okay? And the zinc react slowly, zinc. Slowly. With the dilute one. Let's see now. Copper. Copper is so inert, eh? No, okay? No for dilute, no for concentrated. Both also cannot. So we will be learning this one. Uh, if you really want to try the copper, we should go use the, sorry, we should use the copper oxide instead. Copper oxide with acid. Huh? Because the copper is too stable huh? for this. S for lemon, okay. And then magnesium. Magnesium is group two. Huh? This is not group two. Magnesium group two isn't even though it's not as as reactive as uh, group one, but this is considered very fast now. Okay, quickly. We fluidot alcoholic acid. Okay. This is the operator we look at, and then now we look at the reactivity series. So, group one, 
we have two, the bottom one, the down one is potassium. This is more reactive than the up one. Then we come to group one. After that, we have group two. Okay, look at this. Huh? This is group one, easy lead. This is group two. <coughs> then we have the three layer. This is the copper, silver and gold, which is not reactive. Then what you need to remember is just this four. Aluminium, zinc, iron lead. Okay. Azil. Azil. Okay. A Z I L. Okay. But this is group one. No need to remember. You can refer to your operating table number two also. Come. So this is the summary for that. For the potassium and magnesium, just with the oxygen, you will burn brightly. Calcium and magnesium with the oxygen. Okay. They burn brightly in air. Okay. Um, when they heated to form an oxide. This one, if you heat it, they react slowly. If you heat the gold and silver, nothing happened. So we try this one with the water. So potassium by grossly, okay? Even though we cold water, so as sodium. This is explode. This is just shooting away. So you deal with water, the cold water for this group two is very slow. Okay, for this aluminium, all these things, if you use cold water, nothing at all. Very, very slow, taking ages, maybe years, months, okay? So, but if we try with steam, okay, this is, uh, you heat the, the wool with, or wool, wool with, with water. So when the steam pass through this one, the metal, then they will, for these three aluminium, zinc and iron, okay, they will react. But for the lead, copper, silver, okay, no reaction with water or steam. So if you try potassium group one with and also the calcium with the acid. Oh sorry, that's not I, I, I speak wrongly, yeah. Be careful. Huh? Yeah, this one can, okay. But this one, if with with the acid, huh, they can be vibration and explode. Can you see? That breaks the grass. So for the magnesium reaction, which become less vigorous so if you go down the list, okay? And then no reaction at all with the hydrochloric acid. So for this three, uh, you need to use the, for the copper, you need to use oxide. Okay. Then we come to the displacement direction. Okay. You will place a clean nail, iron nail into the beaker of copper sulfate, okay? So, that's an interesting reaction. Okay, this copper sulfate, uh, you have the copper ion inside. Okay, copper sulfate, you have the copper ion. Copper sulfate, uh, this is original. Okay, this is the thing. Inside you have the copper ion. Copper ion. Okay. So the copper sulfate, uh, copper ion is blue color. Okay, copper ion is blue color. So this copper ion is blue color. And then this nail. It's iron. Okay. So when we try to dip this in into here, the copper iron become copper. No more iron. And then some of the iron come out and become a iron ion. And then the copper may just stick to here. So you can see the some blau color, okay, okay. Stick on the nail, and then the water become a green color. So the green color means that this is the iron, iron, okay. So if I give you a beaker with look in blue color, blue color, and I give you a beaker with a green color
so you know that this is the copper ion and this is the iron ion. Okay, come, read through your books. So <clears throat> the iron nail has become coated with copper. Okay. So <clears throat> iron is more reactive than copper and it has pushed out the copper from the copper sulfate and has reacted to form a iron sulfate. So now the copper sulfate, the copper ion become a copper, which is coating the nail and the iron from the nail joined together with the sulfate to become a iron sulfate. So the iron itself become the, become the <coughs> Iron. Okay, it's not only that, you know, I can show you another test. Okay. This is a silver ion. Silver ion uh, is colorless. Okay, so this is a water of silver ion. Okay, so if I take out I take up a copper wire, a copper wire. So we should look back just now. The series shows that the previous one is iron with copper. So iron is more stronger than the copper, more reactive than the copper. So the iron will become the ion. Okay. And compare these two. And the result will become iron sulfate and not the copper sulfate because this one will kick the copper out. So now we try to use the silver, right? Silver together with the copper. So silver and copper, who is the stronger? Who is more reactive? The copper will be more reactive. So for the moment, the water, the 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 the, the what is what the what is inside is the silver, for example, silver sulfate. So, the silver ion, ion is uh, with the sulfate. So I think that the copper is, you know, see the copper? The copper is slightly higher than the silver. So when, when I push it in, the copper ion will form and the silver metal will come up. Okay, just now the, I, the copper come out and then coating the, the nail. So this one, uh, will we coating the nail? I think yes, uh, we should try. So when we put this thing in, this is the copper, immediately the copper will come out. So here you have a lot of copper iron. Okay, so the copper iron, you become a copper sulfate, which is a blue color later, okay? So, this, uh, the inside, there is a uh, silver iron. Silver is a uh, silvery color. So I should use uh, this color, maybe. Can not, can try not. So, oh, okay. Can. Okay. So, this silver color, will come out, surround it. Can you see? So you can see the silver iron appears here and then the, the solution will try to a little bit of the fit blue. Okay, it takes time for that, okay? So later we have some more, which is displacement reaction. Okay. If copper nail is placed in the iron sulfate, there will be no reaction because the iron, iron sulfate, iron is more reactive. So this one cannot kick this out. So the copper cannot displace the iron in the iron sulfate. It means that the above one can always display the bottom one because this is more reactive. Okay. So we try to use this in some experiment, right? Well, in, in some dear life, uh, dear life uh, as usage application. So this is the one. Regarding the railway, we call it the 
termite reaction, termite reaction, termite. Okay. So, aluminium is more reactive than iron. Aluminium will display iron from solid iron oxide if it is heated. So, can okay, you see? Aluminium is more reactive than the iron. So, aluminium more reactive than iron. So, if mix these together, so the iron will come out and the aluminium will become the ion. Okay. So, they will change. Right? So, the aluminium will become aluminium oxide and kick out the iron. This reaction delays a lot of energy. It is an exothermic. Exothermic, we have done this before. Okay. It means that the heat, it will heat down the surrounding. The surrounding will become very, very hot. So the temperature gets so high and then the iron that is produced is molten. So after this, uh, this iron will be melt, uh, molten. The melting point of iron is this 1535. This reaction is very useful, okay? When you try to weld the railroad together, okay? In the photograph, you can see the reaction being used uh, to weld the railroad together often. Rail need to be welded where the railroad line are. The iron oxide and aluminum powder react together in the container placed on the rail. Iron oxide, uh, can you see, and the aluminum powder. And then the molten iron produced in the reaction is shaped and used to join the rail together. This reaction is called the termite reaction. Okay, can you see? Let me show you on the drawing. So for example, when this is two rail world, there's a gap, gap here. Something is broken here. And you cannot see. So you put the iron oxide. Okay. Plus the aluminium. And then they react together, they will produce a lot of iron plus the aluminium oxide. And then what we want is the iron. And then this is the exothermic. So this iron will melt, even melt. And then melt, they will go into the gap. And fill the gap. Okay. And they, once they cool, now the iron rail is joined back without a crack anymore. This is the whole process of this thermite reaction. So, displacement using carbon. Another place is that this is a a blast finance, huh? Blast finance. So, uh, in between here, okay, there is a metal called, there is a non metal called carbon, okay? Carbon is a non metal, but it can be used to displace some metal from their own. For example, carbon can display the zinc, iron, tin, and lead from their own, okay? What does it mean, as usual? You just burn it together. For example, I burn the carbon with iron oxide. So if this is more reactive, then this one will kick up. So the iron will be up. Okay. So this is the thing I want. Okay. So as a copper. Okay. So the 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 rock that we 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 dig out from the mine is called the oats. The oats is uh, actually is not pure, okay? Usually they have the zinc oxide, iron oxide, tin oxide, and lead oxide, okay? People discovered the carbon could be displayed by iron about 3,500 years ago. They discovered that iron oats heated with a charcoal, a form of carbon, at a very high temperature produce a molten iron. Today, this displacement is still carried out, but on the large scale, which is in the big factory, we call it the finance, Blast finance. Blast means that the wind, wind, can you see air blow into the finance to burn the choke. Choke is the carbon here now we use. And cook, uh, create a high temperature, okay? 
So iron oxide plus the carbon, the carbon will take away the, the, the uh, and kick the iron out. So the iron out and then carbon will become carbon dioxide. So this is the plafonance, okay? Iron, oak, and choke, coke, a, a form of carbon is added here. So then the iron is displaced from this odd by carbon. So the blast means that the air is blown inside. So the molten iron collect at the bottom, okay? So that we can use the iron to make the daily thing we want, okay? So this is today's lesson. This is Mr. Handy Clement for your year nine revision, review, learning, tuition, okay? So if you have any question, always look back to me. I think I have received uh, some requests for the notes. Uh. Okay, uh, I will do that. Uh, just take me my some time, okay? Uh, I hope that you can learn well as well, okay? Stay safe, stay home, okay? And learn well, okay? All the best to you. Bye. That's all for today.